Welcome to AVR Microcontroller Lecture Series. In this video, I'll be going to explain you status register of Atmega32 microcontroller. So let us try to understand this status register step by step. So it is 8-bit status register and in that if you observe first bit, so that is a carry flag bit and it indicates carry generated in operation while we execute instruction in Atmega32. So let us try to understand that by one example. If you have operation of addition with two 8-bit data which is given over here and during this addition here you can observe here this bit 1 that is a extra bit which is generated that is indicating carry right. So if carry is generated beyond this D7 bit in that case this carry flag will get set to 1. Now second bit is 0 flag bit and this 0 flag bit indicates operation results into 0. Like for example if you do addition or subtraction in that if resultant answer is 0 in that case this Z flag that will get set to 1 else it will be 0. I will show you one example once I conclude this status register with each and every bits. After that we will see programming example as well as how to load status register. So let us have another bit that is negative flag bit. Now this negative flag bit that indicates whether given data is negative or positive and that is what a status of D7 bit. Let us have one example like you see here we are doing subtraction operation and in that after subtraction you see here this bit is equals to 1 what it indicates D7 bit is equals to 1 means negative flag bit that will get set to 1 and remember one thing over here here operation is happening as per 2's complement that's why when you do subtraction of 1 minus 2 at a time this will be FF where this is negative data that, that one can say as per D7 bit is equals to 1. Now next is V flag that is overflow flag and that indicates data is exceeding to limit. So let us try to understand what is the limit. See limit is there as per if data is greater than 127 then that will get set to 1 or if it is lower than minus 128 in that case this overflow flag that will get set to 1. What it means? It means carry from D6 to D7 or D7 onwards but not both at the same time that one should understand. Right. In short one should understand this as if you have operation and if that operation is resulting into answer which is beyond 127 means greater than 127 or if it is lower than minus 128 in that case this overflow flag that will get set to 1. Now next is sign flag. Now there is a bit contradiction that is happening in between sign flag and this negative flag. In most of the cases you will be finding both of this flag are same but in some cases those are not same. So how that is happening you just try to understand this see it is happening as per sign flag is equals to n xor v means xoring of overflow flag and negative flag that results into sign flag. Let me explain you one example so it will give you a bit clear idea. So here you see we have two data one is 0 triple 1 1 triple 0 and that is what we are adding it with 4 times 0 1 0 1 0. And when you do this operation, you see after addition, this D7 bit that is getting set to 1. So what it indicates as per negative flag, this is negative data. But as if, if you observe as flag and if it is equals to 0, in that case one should say this is a positive data, it is not a negative data. Right. So that is how one should understand this flag. It may be the case where n is equals to 0, s is equals to 0, in that case one can say that is positive data only. But as if s is equals to 0, n is equals to 1, in that case one should say that is a data which we need to calculate. 
but that will be positive data like over here you see one triple zero double zero one zero so this is a positive data even though d7 bit is equals to one now next is h flag that is half carry flag so that is indicating nibble to nibble carry nibble to nibble means it is a carry generated from fourth bit right like you see the example where here i am adding this two data now see this is four bit which is one nibble and this is another four bit that is second nibble so when carry is generated from this nibble to this nibble then one can say this half carry flag that will get set to one so here you see after having this addition here one nibble carry is there means this half carry flag that will get set to one in this particular example let us have bit copying storage flag so what is bit copy storage flag so to understand that one should understand this see it is not affected by arithmetic and logical instruction we can use this flag by having bld and bst instruction this is what we are using it to use one bit where we have facility of loading and storing one bit at a time for example if you have bld r20 comma 5 what it means this bit which is there with this flag that will get loaded at fifth location of r20 register as if you execute this instruction similarly if you use bst r20 comma 5 in that case whatever fifth bit data with r20 is there that will get loaded into t flag so that is how one can use bld and bst instructions now let us try to understand global interrupt enable flag now my dear friends one should understand one thing see this interrupt flag is useful to understand how we can execute interrupt if it is zero then no interrupt can be recognized by this at mega 32 so to utilize interrupt service this flag must be equals to 1 so before we use interrupt one should set this flag to 1 after that only we can access any interrupt and to have that in assembly language sei and cli instruction is there that is to set and clear interrupt and in c language these are the syntaxes which one should utilize as it is mentioned over here so this is all about status register of at mega 32 now i'll give you few very interesting examples that will resolve your understanding furthermore so let us have a question in which we will see the status of c h and z flag so for that initially i am loading this 0x38 data in r16 and 0x2f data in r17 and if i do addition of r16 and r17 then resultant answer will be there in r16 and if you observe this in terms of bit wise addition then that is how it will happen where this is 3 and this is 8 this is 2 and this is f you just add this to data when we add this to data you just observe this is one nibble and this is second nibble so here there is a carry which is happening from nibble to nibble so we can say this half carry flag that will get set to 1 if you observe our result and answer that is not 0 so zero flag that will be Zero, and if you observe, there is no carry beyond this D seven bit, right? So we can say carry flag is equals to zero. So here there is no carry, that's why C zero. There is nibble to nibble carry, that's why H one. And answer is not zero, means Z is equals to zero as per status in this execution of instruction. Let me explain you one very interesting example in which I'll explain you how to. set or reset individual flag so as we have discussed this is our status register and we have seen it in complete detail right now now how to utilize that how to 
make status of given program so for that we can have loading of data right so here bitwise data that is been defined over here and in that you can see last two bits are one so z is equals to one and c is equals to one now that is what the data which we are loading in r20 but as if you execute out reg comma r20 what it means it will be loading this r20 data into reg so after execution of this instruction this reg status that will be 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 so we can change the status by executing this instruction so this is how one can utilize status register flag i hope you have understood this if you have any query you just place that query in comments definitely i'll get back to you and based on that in future i'll be making videos which will be solving your queries so your suggestions are most welcome thank you so much for watching this video